Okay, it works. So there are a lot of traditional agroforestry systems in Europe, and you have some on these slides, including very old pictures dated 100 years ago on the left, on the right, upside of the of the of the slide. And all those systems have disappeared in the last century, and all trees have been moved out of the, the cultivated landscape. And they were just at the limits of the, of the cultivated landscape, just as you see on this picture. So what we are doing at the moment is we are working on several kinds of agroforestry systems with trees around parcels, just like on these edges that you see, with these special trees that are used for fodder, for fuel wood, and so on, or for limiting the, the parcels. Or we also work on new systems where the trees are inside the parcels, just like on this experimental plot, where the trees are aligned to allow the mechanical uh, management of the plots. So you have a number of different kind of systems in Europe that are researched or adopted at the moment, but there are still a lot of questions about how to make people and farmers adopt those systems. Um, these kind of systems include annual crops with uh, trees or even perennial crops with trees, such as vineyards. It's the image at the center of the slide here. Anyway, um, what we have been doing during the last 20 years in Europe is mostly on-farm research, working with farmers. And you have here an example of a farmer who planted 50 hectares of agroforestry systems 40 years ago. And it's very valuable for us to have this kind of exper experience to, to, to study. And, well, it's all participative research, just as in this example, where the farmer is using shelters and posts to protect the trees and keep and reusing them to plant new, new plots with new, new trees. So that's the kind of thing we have done. So what, have, what did we learn during all these years of study? Well, the first and most important message that we get to the farmers is that they can make money with agroforestry. This was not clear for farmers in Europe, and that's the most important uh, aspect that we, we use now for disseminating agroforestry. And the question was, uh, do we need to mix trees and crops, or don't we? So we have studied that, and we have measured what is the productivity of the agroforestry systems that we use in Europe, and we use the land equivalent ratio criterion, that's expressed the, the area that you need when you separate the trees and the crops to produce the same amount of products as in agroforestry. And in most of our experiments, this land ground ratio is something around 1.4, which means well, this is, these are the slides of one of the experiments where we manage, uh, the, we measure the productivity from tree planting until tree harvesting. This was poplars, poplars with canola and wheat until the tree harvest. And on this kind of experiment, we have measured a land equivalent ratio that varies between 1.2 to 1.6. And this is a very important message for the farmers, because if you have 1.4 land equivalent ratio, it means that a 100 hectare agroforestry farm will produce as much as a 140 hectare farm where the trees and the crops are separated. So this message was very important to modify the policies and to convince people to adopt agroforestry. Of course, we also have a lot of concerns with the environment in Europe, and the environmental services of agroforestry are very, very important. Um, landscaping, the image of farming, farming with nature, is really a very important message for farmers and consumers in Europe but also adaptation to climate change. You know about it. I won't be too long on that, but it's very important for animals to get protection. It's also more and more important for crops. Cereals, different crops grown in the shade of trees, are less prone to drought hazards, for example, that we have more and more in Europe. And the map on the left is showing you in red and orange the areas of Europe where climate change could have very detrimental effects on crop yields. And we expect that uh, agroforestry system will 
uh, help to protect the crops against these difficulties. Uh, but in Europe, we have also a lot of work on uh, flood mitigation and the impact of trees on the infiltration of water, in the retention of water during flood events, and this is a very important aspect too. We also work on carbon storage, and it's a very important aspect. On the left-hand side, you have a typical view of a traditional system in Spain, and um, <coughs> You, you, you have uh, two tons of carbon per hectare and per year that are sequestered in that kind of landscape. So it's really a very good uh, system. Fire hazards are also a, a, a concern in the southern part of Europe. <coughs> Sorry. And the trees that are planted in agroforestry are protected against the fire hazard, which is very good uh, for, the, for the owners. We also work on the reduction of the nitrogen transfer to water bodies, to rivers, to water tables. And we have de demonstrated that uh, agroforestry has limits the amount of that. Um, um, sorry. And we also work on biodiversity, because when you introduce trees in treeless uh, landscapes, just like we have in Europe, you introduce a lot of biodiversity. And this is the kind of habitat fragmentation that we try to combat with agroforestry and allow different species to move in the landscape and to, be, uh, to, to come back in the agricultural landscape. <coughs> we also have a number of studies on typical um, example of uh, flora and fauna in Europe that takes advantage of agroforestry systems and this is very important. You have a different images on that slide of of species we work on with agroforestry. Okay, <coughs> a lot of people ask us if we could reduce the use of pesticides with agroforestry, and my answer is so far that it's still hypothetical. We would like to, we work on that, we have evidences in some cases that it could be very efficient, but it's not yet uh, demonstrated in every case. So let's be careful about that. We also have a lot of people asking if we could reduce the use of fertilizers in agroforestry and use the trees as fertilizers. Still, it's something that needs to be more studied, and it's not clear at the moment that it works everywhere. We have very few nitrogen-fixing trees in Europe, so it's not that easy way to use agroforestry. Now, <clears throat> about the European setting and what's going on at the moment for the policy on agroforestry in Europe. <coughs> Well, um, so until the, the, the beginning of the, two, of the, of the year tw 12, um, to 2000, agroforestry was really not allowed it for farmers in Europe. Why? Because farmers in Europe have need to have some subsidies to, for their crops, and as soon as you had trees on your plot, you, lo you lose the subsidies. So farmers were really deterred to use agroforestry, and we had to change that. To change that, we created association like the French Agroforestry Association, which has a, 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 a newsletter, a website, um, a journal, and so on. We also have, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, we also have uh, the new European Agroforestry Federation, URAF, and I, I am acting as the president of this federation. And we have newsletters, and we have a, a website, and we are lobbying uh, at Brussels for the European Commission and for the European members of the Parliament to push agroforestry in the policy in Europe. So at the moment, URAF unites six national agroforestry associations in France, the UK, Spain, Germany, Greece, Sweden, and we have 250 members in 17 European countries, and we hope to have much more in a few years. <coughs> so we are lobbying for agroforestry in the Common Agricultural Policy, the CAP, which is the key policy for agriculture in Europe. And what we try to convince is that agroforestry is a standard agriculture management. It's really agriculture. That's very important. And we also try to convince that it's efficient for the environment point of view. 
So we have made a number of meetings, including this one at the European Parliament last year, to, to, to put the politicians uh, uh, at the evidence of what agroforestry can bring. And from that, uh, we have very key decisions that were made and were acted by, the, by Europe is that first, agroforestry is agriculture. It's not forestry. That's a very important move when you go to policies. And then we also have convinced people that trees and farms are capital assets. They are not stocks, <coughs> which means that they are not tax taxed. For example, a farmer today would say, I have two tractors and 850 trees. Trees are used for the purpose of producing in agriculture. And this is very important. So what we are doing at the moment, we try to include agroforestry in the European legislation, regulation, including a definition, which is on the screen at the moment, because it's very important. If people have no definition, they can't agree with us. And what made all these political moves possible, first, agroforestry demonstration plots were very important. The productivity evidence, the fact that agroforestry is productive, and then we had the support of all farmers' union because they said, okay, that's very interesting for us. And we are lobbying with national societies. And the concerns about the environment help a lot in favor of agroforestry. So what is essential at the moment for agroforestry in Europe? First, it should have no negative impact on payments for farmers. It should be compatible with the mechanization. And we have to convince extension officers, agricultural services, and so on. So uh, we have also technical recommendation now available. And a final example of what we are promoting in Europe is to have new tools for the conditionality of the, of the policy, which, me, which means that each farmer in Europe should comply with some rules to get helps from the, from the, the union. And one of these rules could be what we call the habitat ratio, which is a proportion of the farm that is under the beneficial influence of trees and natural habitats. And that can be calculated for each farm. Well, that's all the, 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 um, the situation for policy in Europe today. We are moving fast. We hope to have a very agroforestry friendly uh, policy starting next year, and in that way, agroforestry could be a very important move for, uh, for agriculture in Europe in the next decade. Thank you very much.